Hello, my name is Sue Heza and I specialise in the research and study of ancient bead making technology. This project involved the testing of Roman glass from excavations in Britain to investigate its working properties in the flame and also to compare it with the modern glasses used for glass working today. My research on early medieval glass beads from Britain and Europe involves replicating ancient monochrome and polychrome beads to identify the making and decorating techniques. Here is a 5th century bead string from England that I have re replicated in hot glass here on the right. I was seeking to identify the ancient techniques. Replica tools. Only a few replica tools of the type available to ancient bead makers are used. The heat source is a simple gas blowtorch that is not adjustable and reaches similar temperatures to the type of wood fuel furnace that would most likely have been used by ancient bead makers. Materials. Glass. I used modern soda lime bead makers glass from Murano in Italy that has similar chemical constituents to ancient glasses as shown from XRF and other analyses. The colours were matched as closely as possible. Here is a short video showing how hot glass beads were made. Here is a simple bead being made. The mandrel is coated with clay slip so that the bead can be removed easily when cooled. The end of the glass rob is heated until it melts and the hot glass is wound round the mandrel to make the bead. It is then heated in the flame and forms a perfect round shape. Here are some examples of shaping and decorating beads. This shows working with wooden tongs that have been dipped in water to stop them burning. I am making a cylinder bead. And here I am using tweezers to pull a thread of glass, a stringer, that will be used to decorate beads. And here is the stringer being applied to a bead to make a wave pattern. The added glass sinks into the surface with more heating. Here are some replica beads that I have made for my research as I explore ancient bead making techniques. But does the modern glass that I use have similar properties to the ancient glass when used in the flame? If not, then all the experimental work on techniques was not valid. I decided that I needed to study the physical properties of the ancient glass, its melting point, working temperature range and behaviour in the flame. I approached the Museum of London Archaeology and they kindly provided me with 250 grams of Roman glass from Basinghall Street excavations in London. This is coloured, which is waste glass collected for recycling at a Roman glassworking site. This would have been the base glass used for a lot of early medieval beads and glass blowing right across Europe. Viscosity. This is a measure of how stiff or fluid the glass is when it is molten. When working in hot glass crafts, this property is very important. If the glass is too stiff, it cannot be worked. If the glass is too fluid, it cannot be controlled. The important factor is the working range, which is the range of temperature from the point where the glass softens sufficiently to work it to the point where it becomes too fluid to control. It is possible to calculate the viscosity of glass using the published chemical analyses of ancient glass that are widely available in reports. Here is a graph to show how glass viscosity changes through a series of stages as it is heated. Viscosity decreases as the glass is heated. The circles indicate the points where the glass begins to change to the next stage. 
the viscosity points have been calculated from the chemical analysis of this particular glass. Note the two points that indicate the working range where the glass can be worked successfully from here to here. Here is a graph showing the comparison of different types of glass in the curves of different colours. It shows Roman glass compared with a variety of modern glasses. Roman glass is very much in the middle and shows a shallow or long curve indicating a good long working range. And here is the, work, the Roman glass sliding down there, very much in the middle of all the other glasses. This graph shows the working ranges of different glasses in degree centigrade. Note how the borosilicate glass in green has the longest working range, but needs a high heat. A feet glass, the glass I have been using for my experiments, is shown in blue, which is the modern beadmaker's glass. It has a shorter working range than the Roman glasses and needs less heat. Roman glass, shown in mauve and turquoise, has a medium working range and works hotter than a feet glass. This is noticeable in the practical bead mating tests discussed later. The glass coefficient of expansion or the COE. This is another important factor, which is a measure of how much the glass expands and contracts when it is heated and cooled. It is used by modern glass makers to identify glass types. A higher COE indicates a soft glass that softens at lower temperatures, while a low COE glass will need a hotter flame to melt. And then there is the important point of compatibility. It's important to use glass at the same COE in one object or bits can fall off after cooling, as in, the, as in these 5th century beads from England. They've lost their trails of blue glass, which shows it was incompatible with the white glass. This table shows the different COE figures of some of the glasses used in the study. Blue colour is the ancient glass at the bottom. The modern glass COE figures are provided by manufacturers. The ancient glass was calculated from chemical content. It's remarkable how close the figures are and how similar the ancient glass is to the modern glass. Now we come to the practical experiments. There is not time here to describe all the different experiments that were tried, so I am concentrating on selected ones and their results. Here is a photograph of some of the glass supplied. It is small pieces of coloured, which is broken glass collected for recycling. Very variable in shape and size and from many different broken vessels. It was all natural blue-green coloured, the natural coloured caused by impurities in the ingredients. This was a preliminary test using fusing in a kiln to observe the behaviour of different glasses when heated to fusing temperature of 850 degrees centigrade. Five different pieces of Roman coloured of similar size were laid on a kiln board. Six different pieces of modern glass that have known viscosity were, and COE were placed alongside. The board was placed in a cool kiln and fused using a standard glass fusing program. The results. The fused glass is shown on the right. The Roman glass at the top is well rounded. The modern glass below is more variable. Modern bottle glass slumped the least and the effete modern bead makers glass of COE 104 the most. The Roman glass is most similar to modern artisan glasses. This was very encouraging. It would be familiar for modern glass workers to use. Polarizing film can be used to show stress in glass. Glass is laid on a polarizing glass sheet with a light below it. A second polarizing sheet is held over the glass at right angles to the first sheet. Any halos that appear in the glass indicate stress. An initial test on the Roman glass coloured showed that most had stresses within the glass. This either means that the glass was not properly annealed after it was made, or it has been subjected to high temperatures 
above about 500 centigrade since. To test Roman glass for similar COE to modern glass types, four pieces of Roman glass were cut into four samples each. They were fused onto strips of modern glass of known COE. The glass was then checked with polarising film. A lack of a halo shows closer compatibility and cracking indicates high stress and incompatibility where the stress disappears. The results show that four Roman samples were all different in compatibility to each other. Sample 1 was closest to 104 COE, sample 2 closest to 90 COE, sample 4 was closest to 96 COE. Sample 3 showed no compatibility to any, so maybe even higher COE than 104. To compare the viscosity of Roman glass with modern glass. For this test, chips of Roman glass cut from a single piece were alternated with modern COE 90 glass, which is black, and built up on the end of a metal rod. The glass was heated until it was at a uniform working temperature. A glass rod was attached to the free end of the stack and the glass was pulled. The modern glass moved much more and became longer and thinner than the Roman glass. This shows that this sample of Roman glass is more viscous than the modern COE 90 glass. Testing the working properties of the Roman glass in the flame. This practical test was conducted with several different types of glass to compare and contrast the behaviour of different types of glass when making wound beads over a simple flame. Preparation. Glass samples of approximately two grams were prepared and preheated to 500 degrees centigrade in a kiln to prevent shattering when first held in the blowtorch flame. The glass sample was removed from the kiln with tweezers, attached to a hot pond till and held in the flame. Time measured as follows with a stopwatch, the time taken for the sample to soften and sag under its own weight, time measured for wound bead rotated in the flame to become an even round sphere, and the time measured for glass to lose its glow completely. This graph shows the different glasses results plotted. Modern glass is on the left and several samples of each glass type were tested. Despite inevitable variations, each sample has the same profile for each type. Roman glass on the right, every sample was a different piece and the variation between pieces is remarkable. Some took longer to soften, some to round and so on. Most show they are more viscous than the modern samples. You can see the timings are longer. Despite the differences between the samples of Roman glass, I found it was easy to work for bead making. It took a longer time to achieve each stage compared to the modern glass, but the glass was controllable and a pleasure to work with. The differences in the profiles did not appear to affect the working of the glass. Some glasses just looked slightly wrong, longer to reach different stages than others, which was barely noticeable. And to my surprise, I preferred the Roman glass to the modern glass. Analysis of the results and the assessment of the actual working properties in the flame can be summed up as followed. The Roman glass is extremely good to work with. It has an excellent working range and forgiving handle in the flame. I preferred it to modern lamp working glass when using my simple non-adjustable torch. These findings open up many more questions and possibilities of further investigation and experiments. The next project is to colour glass with metal oxides and repeat the tests. Here are the initial trials with adding metallic oxides to uncoloured glass. Samples of the Roman glass will be coloured in this way and then tested again for differences in behaviour in the flame. It is very likely that the bead makers of antiquity recycled coloured and added their own colourants for their beads and vessels. While glass making requires large furnaces and very high temperatures, adding colourants to glass can be done at the artisan level as it is done today in Turkey and other developing countries. I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation and thank you for listening.